Well, the only law under which we all operate is actually not a law, it's a code, and it's called the Uniform Commercial Code. Yes. They did away with any actual laws, which probably happened somewhere in the 30s all over the world. It was, oh, 38 in the United States, and I think before that in Canada, but anyway, somewhere around there. They did away with what's called common law, and they instituted the Commercial Code. And all the Commercial Code is, is laws uh, under which we operate in commerce which happens actually to be maritime commercial law or, or admiralty commercial law. Yes. So all this has to do with banking. There is no other law. There's no criminal code. There's no nothing. Nothing that applies to us. Those policies, laws, statutes, etc., apply only to the people who made them up for the corporation from which they come. So, for example, when a cop you know, stops you for going through a stop sign, well, show me the law. Well, there can't be a law that says that. Unless I agree to it, of course, and why would anybody do that? I'm not suggesting that people go through stop signs. I'm just using that as an example. But that's a statute that doesn't apply to men and women. It applies to corporate entities and the employees of those corporations. Yes. So the only laws that really apply is are the codes of this Uniform Commercial Code. So we're all operating in commerce. And that means, then, that even the courts, into which pe some people actually believe they have to go, they're not courts of law. They're courts of commerce. So when they drag you in saying something like, well... You know, did you murder this guy? Well, it's not about murder. It's about who has stolen whose credit and how much does who owe whom in order to balance the book. Yes. Simply bookkeeping. It's accounting. It has nothing to do with anything. It's not about theft. It's not about you name it. It's about accounting and how do we balance the book. And that's what the IRS, etc., is all about, is they're there to balance the books. And in fact, they're simply not the enemy that we've always thought they were. Hmm. That's, that's a statement in itself, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. We all hear about the IRS. In fact, just before you called, I was talking to a friend, and she's extremely concerned about, you know, what's the IRS or the court now because of the issues in court. What are they going to do? And I said, well, you got to remember, the IRS is only perturbed because you didn't file a tax return in order to get your tax returned to you, and now their books are out of balance, and they're blaming you because they don't have the paperwork about how you ran your commercial affairs for that year. Mm. Now, if you'll simply let them know how you did that, they'll stop chasing you, and they'll start chasing, chasing the ones who actually stole your credit. And in this particular case, the court stole her credit. So all she has to do is name them, and the IRS will go after the judges. Mm. The way we want it. We're planning on putting the courts out of system. I mean, out of commission, because that system is actually contrary to what's really going on, which is we are operating in bankruptcy. Every country in the world, when it failed to pay back its debt to the, uh, the IMF, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, it had to declare bankruptcy because that's why they collected the gold and silver because they it, ran out of everything. Is, is this applicable to all nations across the globe, you're saying? Yes. Possibly not some tribes in the middle of Africa who, who still use wampum or whatever. Right. Not disparaging them. They're actually freer than we are. Sure, yeah, exactly. Yep. Any country, and we're all working desperately on this to find the correct forms. And just in case your European um, uh, listeners are um, wondering about what forms, um, I, I can't say this for certain, but we're beginning to think that um, people over there, and even Australia and New Zealand and England, they might just have to get um, EINs, which, which are employer identification numbers, and also international tax identification numbers, known as ITINs, with the IRS, or with Social Security, because it seems, I can't say this for certain, but it seems as if the IRS is kind of the head, the head guy as far as collection agents go. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's heard of the IRS. Not everybody's heard of IR, ATO, or whatever. Your, what's your tax agency called there? They're called uh, Skatteverket. But, see, I haven't heard of that, but I'm sure you've heard of the IRS. Yes. So it's kind of like they're the, they're the big guys because they truly are the best collection agent on the planet. Well, the truth is, they're supposed to be collecting for us. I know this is really, really hard to imagine. But whenever we have put our labor in the form of cash, or credit card payments, or debit card payments, or money orders, or certified checks, or however it is, that's all from our labor. When we put that into the public, we're actually obstructing the bankruptcy. Because we're all acting in bankruptcy, in other words, the commercial code is based on and due to bankruptcy, we're actually in violation of public policy, and we're doing it wrong. We're not supposed to be paying anything with our labor. We're supposed to be setting off public debt with our signature. Which means when somebody presents you with a bill, which, by the way, they tend not to do anymore because that is the easy way to set off public debt, they're supposed to actually, I mean, you go into a store and you buy a, a lawnmower. Let's pick on Sears. I always pick on Sears. Um, so you go in there. What they're supposed to do when you take your lawnmower to the counter is they're supposed to write you up a bill that says who you are, who the Sears is, and, and the cost of the thing and, and what it is, what they get. And what we're supposed to be able to do is simply sign for it, thereby claiming it, and giving them access to what's called a treasury account so that we can let the treasury know to offset Sears' debt, which Sears created.
strong diversion, which I don't really want to get into, but when we labor, we're giving, we are putting forth our value, and what we're getting in return is debt notes. In other words, yes. debt Pardon me, those notes operate in debt. It's kind of like picture the level of, of seawater. Well, there's nothing, we are putting in something positive, so imagine the sea going up, right? Mm -hmm. What they're giving us is something negative, so now we're operating below sea level. So it isn't direct compensation. In fact, we are giving away our labor for nothing. What's that called? Slavery. So this is how they've enslaved us, by pretending to give us something of value that isn't of value. And yet, it's true, we can go and get what we want with that. But we're not supposed to. <laughs> we're not supposed to be handing over that cash. We're supposed to be setting off public debt with our signature and using cash simply for items between you and me. Like if, if you want a haircut and I say, hey, I can cut your hair, Andrew. So you say, come on over. And then you say, well, how can I compensate you? And I can say, well, let's see. Um, you can invite me for supper. That would be a nice compensation. Or um, let's see. Or well, you know what? If you don't want to have me to supper, you can just give me some of those notes that you have that you get from working. And you say, fine. And I take those and I can do what I want with them. Mm. Go someplace and get something else. So, but not, not in the public, just the private. In other words, then I could maybe use my friend's computer for the day. And he said, well, how are you going to compensate me? I said, well, I got these notes that Andrew gave me. So that's how that's supposed to work. We're not supposed to put those notes into the public. We're supposed to be able to walk into any store. They write us up a bill. We just, we set it off by signing our name which actually instructs the Treasury to set off their debt. So that then, of course, they can go buy what, whatever it was I just got from them, like the lawnmower. They go back to the, their supplier and they get a, a lawnmower and they use their account to do that. Mm. So they've been credited. Now, stop me if it gets too crazy because they know it's, everything is absolutely the, the opposite of what we've been thinking. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know it's it's a little dingy, but um, no, no, I mean, it, it's it's fine. But let's let's um, let's go back a little bit more and, and go over it, kind of the, the overview once more here a little bit. Because if we think of money, right, right, of of the bat, obviously it's it's a means of of um, uh, exchange. It's 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 a uh, it's better in a way or easier, I should put it, to carry around uh, like let's say paper money instead of carrying around uh, you know coming with your you know tractor or whatever it is that you want to exchange, right? You know, so in that regard, we can think of money as a kind of a, a symbolic means of exchange. But what you are talking about right here now is that uh, money has been uh, transformed into something else. It, it no longer represents the true value of what it's supposed to be. Is that correct? Yes, it does get us what we want. As you say, we don't want to walk around with a tractor in our pocket, so we carry cash. But that's just between you and me and the private. But when we go to work, um, it's true they're giving us that, but we were never meant to earn our living anyway. And that gets into a whole ethics issue where... What we're supposed to be doing is whatever our talent is, and um, we all have a talent, whether we've realized it or not, and so we're supposed to be doing that. I mean, there's carpenters out there, there's people who build lovely furniture, there's people who make lovely music, there's... and so what they ought to be doing is doing that for their fellow man, and when their fellow man says, oh, I just love this piece of music that you played for me or this, this desk that you built for me, what can I do for you? And, and then he says, well, you can do this for me, or if you can't, or you don't want to, or that's not appropriate right now, tell you what, just give me some of those notes and I can take them someplace and get something from somebody else. In other words, we're not even supposed to have these corporations in our lives. They shouldn't even be existing, but the reason they're existing is essentially to confiscate our labor. Yes. And they've, they've enslaved us instead of, so we're not working for ourselves anymore and each other. We're working for major corporations, and we're simply cogs in a, in a machine there, and we're not serving anybody by doing it. Because most of the people who are, I mean, you look in any city and you can see these skyscrapers, what are people doing in there? They're not doing anything for their fellow man. They're either doing stockbroking or, in, or um, insurance or banking or, or something that has involved them, rather enslaved them, in the commercial world. There's, there's no good being done from any of these corporations. Now, yes, these corporations do supply us with the goods that we want. And that's where we say, okay, it was my value that funded the manufacture of this because I have a birth certificate and because you knew. That, and by that, I mean the alleged government. They, yes. What they did was they used the birth certificate as a bond in order to create the credit to create or to manufacture whatever the corporations, in other words, create the corporations and manufacture whatever it is. 